In this video, we will be discussing practice paper 1, April 2021, General Science, Physical Science paper. Physics paper will be of 40 marks in your final exam in General Science. Section 1. Question 1. Differentiate between virtual image and real image. Now in section 1, totally you have 6 questions. From those 6 questions, you have to answer any 3 questions. But in this video, we will see all the questions without choices so that you can practice for the final exam. So, in this, it, first it is saying virtual image and then it is saying real image. So, what we will do is, on the left side, we will write virtual image and on the right side, we will write real image. Now, and also we will write a column for a serial number so that it does not look clumsy and it looks neat. So, first difference is, virtual image is formed when rays after deflection appear to be coming from a point. That is, when they come from a point, they appear to come from a point, then virtual image is formed. What is a real image? It is formed if light rays after reflection or refraction converge to a point. We know that real image means converge. That is they meet at a point. What is a virtual image? Image cannot be obtained on screen. But a real image can be obtained on screen. Virtual image, it is always erect. Real image, it is always inverted. In real, virtual image, rays appear to diverge from the image point. That is, they appear to move away from the image point in a virtual image. But in real image, rays actually meet at the image point. So remember, in real image, they will meet. In virtual image, they will diverge. So these are the differences, four points which you should write for differentiating between virtual and real image. Second question, all the chemical equations must be balanced. Why? Guess and write. So, you know that, uh, what is the chemical reaction? Whenever reactants are forming products, that is called as chemical reaction. So, on the reactant side, you will have some number of atoms and in the product side also you have some number of atoms. So, when the atoms on both the reactants and the products are equal, then only we can say equation is balanced. Now, let us write that in words. All the chemical equations must be balanced because atoms are neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. According to law of conservation of mass, the total mass of the products formed in chemical reaction must be equal to the total mass of reactants consumed. Third question, bee sting leaves a chemical substance that causes pain and irritation. So bee sting is leaving a chemical substance on the skin and that substance is causing pain and irritation. You have to name that chemical substance and you also have to say how should we get relief from that pain. So the chemical substance left by B is methanoic acid or it is also called as forming acid that causes burning sensation. And it also said us to say the relief to get rid of that pain. So how to get relief? By using a mild base like baking soda on the stung area. What are the precautions to be taken? while diluting strong acid. So remember, diluting means mixing water with it so that the effect of the acid is reduced. So, what precautions should we follow? So, answer 4. The precautions which we should take in order to dilute a strong acid is do not add water to acid or base as the mixture might split out and cause burns. That is, we should not add water to acid or base, but we should add acid or base first to water. Second is, use gloves during this experiment. Third is, use eyeglasses to protect your eyes. Fifth question, focal length of the concave mirror is 8 cm. Focal length is given as 8 cm of which mirror? Concave mirror. The object is placed at 16 cm in front of the mirror and we have to write the position and nature of the image. Let us suppose this is my concave mirror and here it is given f is equals to how much? 8 cm. Focal length is indicated by small f and it is telling the object is placed at 16 cm in front of the mirror. That is object distance is given as 16 cm and since it is concave mirror it will be minus. This is my 16 cm, so this is my object distance. Hmm. 
this is given as 16 centimeter and we have focal length is 8 centimeter so here it is my focal length till here that is nothing but this 8 centimeter now in the question so object we know this is my object let us suppose object is integrated by O so I'll extend this principal axis more it is telling you have to write the position and nature of the image so we have to use two rules here in order to draw concave mirror one is whenever a line is parallel to the principal axis it passes through the focus so a line is parallel to the principal axis it is passing through focus this is my focus this is my focus so you have to draw the arrows it is coming like this it is going like this and one more ray is whenever a ray is passing through the focus it will emerge parallel to the principal axis so whenever a ray is passing through the focus it will emerge parallel to the principal axis a ray is coming it is passing through the focus it is parallel to the principal axis so where these two rays are meeting that is known as my image so here we can see this is my image i so here we can say that object height and image height is same okay so what is it saying here we have to find and uh, know the position of the image so where is the image formed the image is formed on center of curvature so we can say position about position that it is formed at center of curvature that is c and what about nature of image we can say the image is formed in front of the mirror means it is real and it is of the same size as the object and this is my nature of the image same size real and it is also inverted inverted means it is below the principal axis inverted if you want some more hints in drawing uh, ray diagrams you can comment below and also i have on lenses i have some rules video in the playlist of light refraction you can go and watch this is my sixth question here it is asking me to complete the ray diagram so this we can say what is this this is my convex lens and here i can say that uh, the ray is coming in a direction which is making some angle with this convex lens and it is not straight it is some um, with an angle okay so here this is my half part i have to complete this ray diagram so suppose if the ray is coming like this means there will be many rays right so i will draw one more ray and i will use the rule that is whenever a ray is passing through the optic center it will emerge back in the same path so this is my optic center so one more ray is coming which is parallel to this ray and it is passing through the optic center and it will emerge back in the same path so these are my arrows now one more rule i can use is the ray is coming like this right so what will happen whatever angle of incidence it makes here the same angle of refraction it will make here so let us suppose if this is coming in this angle so what will happen it is coming like this it will go like this in the same angle okay so it will go somewhere like this now remember the point where the two rays which are coming after refraction form then that point is called as image point so let us suppose this is my image point and this is my focal plane so here my image is forming at f1 next question draw the diagram showing eye defect myopia and its correction we know myopia is known as farsightedness myopia is an eye defect that is people who have eye glasses suffer from myopia and who cannot see far objects clearly here figures 7a and 7b are showing the eye defect myopia you can see some rays are coming and already there is an eye lens in the eye and they are forming an image before the retina so in both the cases we can see the image is formed before the retina so we can say that figures 7a and 7b are the showing the eye defect myopia now let us draw the correction for myopia that is i want the image to be formed on retina i don't want the image to be formed before the retina because only if it is formed on retina then only i can see the images clearly so i have to place uh, before a convex lens a concave lens so let us see how do we do that Figure C shows the correction of myopia defect. M is 
called as myopia point l is called as least distinct of distinct vision so here we can see that by placing a concave lens before l and between l and convex lens we can uh, bring the retina back to the point uh, we can bring the image back to the retina so now the person can see the object clearly and the myopia defect will be gone so this is the correction of myopia defect so you have to draw these three figures for this answer that is showing the eye defect as well as correction of myopia next question explain cause of 2 decay how can it be prevented so the cause of 2 decay is when will 2 decay happen 2 decay starts when the ph of the mouth is lower than 5.5 in our mouth we have tooth enamel tooth enamel which is the hardest substance in the body gets corroded corroded means it gets damaged when will it get damaged when ph of the mouth is below 5.5 Bacteria present in the mouth produce acids by degradation of sugar and food particles in the mouth. That is, suppose if you eat some, uh, that is, if you eat some sugar or if you eat some uh, sweets, then and if you don't brush your teeth and you sleep like that for some days, then what will happen? The bacteria will come inside the mouth and they will uh, corrode the teeth, and because of that, it will cause uh, two decay. So, how to prevent two decay? So, the prevention is. Clean mouth after eating food and if you use toothpaste then it can prevent 2 decay because toothpaste are basic so that basic toothpaste will prevent the excess acid which was be present before the, in the teeth because of 2 decay. Question 9 is what happens if concave mirror is used as rear view mirror? Guess and write. We know a rear view mirror is a mirror which is used wider field of view. So, actually, in rear view mirrors, we use convex mirrors. So, it is telling us what will happen, suppose, if we use a concave mirror. So, here we know that rear view mirror is used in cars to see more number of vehicles behind because it gives wider field of view. But concave mirror forms inverted image in all the cases except in one case when object is placed very close to the surface of mirror. So, obviously, it would become very difficult for driver to see the objects behind which are inverted. Suppose you are driving and uh, the images you are seeing they are coming but they are inverted. So, how will the driver drive smoothly? Also, the surface of concave mirror is curved inside. So, it can't provide rear view when it is used. Tenth question, write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction of barium chloride solution with sodium sulfate solution. So, it is asking me to write a balanced chemical equation. That is an equation in which LHS and RHS of both the atoms is same. I have to write that equation and I have to combine barium chloride and sodium sulfate. So, the formula of barium chloride is BaCl2 and the formula of sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. So, I should combine these both formulas and I should write a reaction. So, the in this type of sums, 8 mark sums, always write in steps. So, step 1 in this reaction will be the barium chloride BaCl2, it combines with sodium sulfate in A2SO4. Now, this barium will combine with sulfate to form barium sulfate and this sodium will combine with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Now, which type of reaction is this? This type of reaction is called as double displacement reaction because the ions between both the elements are being exchanged here. Now, if you want a detailed video on the types of reaction, you can click this I button uh, in this types of reaction video is there and also if you want to learn more about how to balance two reactions two videos are there in the playlist of chemical reactions here also you can click this i button and uh, in which i have explained in very detail in a very clear way about balancing please watch that and share with others also now step two will be always in the left hand side column you should have elements on the right hand side column you should have number of atoms and left hand side and uh, right hand side that is how many atoms are there on the left hand side and how many atoms are there on the right hand side that will write so first write down barium in barium how many atoms are there on left side one atom so i'm writing one atom on rhs how many atoms are there on barium one atom only so one atom i'm writing next i have sodium in sodium how many atoms are there here I have two atoms which are attached to sodium, so two atoms on LHS. Now on this side, how many atoms are there for sodium? Only one atom. Remember, if you don't have anything below means you should see beside the whole element. So here beside the whole element I have one, so the number of atoms of sodium are one. Next I have chlorine. On chlorine I can say two atoms are attached to chlorine, so how many atoms are there on LHS? Two. Here I can say only one atom is there on chlorine, so one atom. Next, I have oxygen. On oxygen, four atoms are attached here, so four atoms on LHS. Oxygen, four atoms are attached here, so four atoms on RHS. Next, I have sulfur. In sulfur, you can see here, I have one atom here. 
See, this two belongs only to sodium and this four belongs only to oxygen. It does not belong to sulfur. So, I said whenever you don't have anything attached on the element side, see the uh, uh, beside the whole element. So, here beside in front of the whole element, here I have one. So, how many atoms are there for sulfur? Only one atom is there. So, on the ledge is one atom of sulfur and here on the RH is also this four belongs only to oxygen. It does not belong to sulfur. So, only one atom on sulfur. So, this completes my step two. Now, step three will be I have to multiply an equal number of coefficients on uh, the side which needs to be made equal to LHS. So here I have barium on LHS and RHS it is balanced. Sodium is not balanced because in LHS I have 2 on RHS I have 1. So what I will do is uh, between sodium and chlorine, sodium is metal and chlorine is non-metal. Always first we should give first preference to balancing metal. As sodium is metal, I will multiply this 1 with 2 so that we both become 2, 2 and then I will... Um, See what I have to do next. And also oxygen and sulfur are balanced here because LHS is equals to RHS. So first I will balance sodium. So step 3, same thing, elements, number of atoms, LHS, RHS I have to write here. Next, barium, I will write the elements. Barium, sodium, chlorine, oxygen and sulfur. Next what I will do is, I will write the atoms. How many atoms? Barium, already it was 1, 1. Next I will write for sodium. How many are there for sodium? 2 was there on LHS. I am not changing that. Only on RHS I am multiplying it with 2 here. So 1 into 2. Next on chlorine, first I am balancing sodium, right? So I multiplied with 2. Now chlorine here is, it is 2 and here it is 1 only. Similarly on oxygen 4, here also 4 only. Similarly on sulfur 1, here also 1 only. So what I will do is, after multiplying this with 2, again from this table, what chemical reaction I will write, I will get, I will write now, okay? So the only change here is being made on the sodium chloride side because I am multiplying sodium on RHS. So only this will change, this whole 3 will remain same only. So see, barium chloride plus sodium sulfate giving rise to barium sulfate. Now if you observe here, how many atoms are we adding on sodium? Two atoms. So in front of the whole element of sodium chloride, I'll write two here. Now this two belongs to sodium as well as this two belongs to chlorine. So again from this reaction, I will get another table. From this table again, element number of atoms, LHS, RHS, please draw the rows and columns. Okay, as I have to write the whole question paper, I'm not drawing rows and columns, but please you draw. Write the elements again, barium, sodium, chlorine, oxygen, sulfur. How many atoms are there on LHS for barium? One, one again, same thing. But on sodium, it has changed. So two, two. From this, we are writing now from this reaction, right? And if you observe, the number of atoms for chlorine has also become now? 2 on RHS. So what I'll do is on the chlorine side for number of atoms on RHS also I'll write 2. Now observe all LHS and RHS 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4, 4. Similarly 1, 1 sulfur, 1 sulfur. So we can see here LHS is equals to RHS of both the elements. What was the question? I had to write a balanced chemical reaction. So this is my balanced chemical reaction. Step 4 I'll say my reaction is balanced and I'll write the balanced chemical reaction. Balanced chemical reaction is that is my step 4. BaCl2 plus Na2SO4 giving rise to BaSO4 plus 2NaCl. Next question. 11th question. We are starting section 3 which carries 8 marks. In this you have to do any 2 questions. 4 questions will be given to us. 11th question. Explain preparation and uses of bleaching powder. So first we will write how to prepare bleaching powder because that is asked first. So, chlorine gas is produced during electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride. We know whenever we do electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride, we get chlorine. So, this chlorine gas which we get, it is used for the manufacture of bleaching powder. So, we can see here we are having chlorine. This chlorine is being used for the manufacture of bleaching powder. So, to get bleaching powder, we use chlorine. How do we use chlorine? Bleaching powder is produced by the action of chlorine on dry slake lime. That is when we add chlorine and dry slake lime here. Calcium hydroxide is called as dry slaked lime. Okay, whose formula is CaOH2. So when we add this chlorine which is produced by the manufacture of bleaching powder with dry slake lime, we get bleaching powder whose formula is CaOCl2 and water. So this is how we prepare bleaching powder. Uses of bleaching powder. It is used for bleaching cotton and linen in the textile industry, for bleaching wood pulp in the paper industry, for bleaching wash clothes in the laundry. It is used as an oxidizing agent in many chemical industries. It is used for disinfecting drinking water to make it free of germs. It is used as reagent in the preparation of chloroform. Always I say that the uses of bleaching powder and other uses which are given in Acids, base and salt chapter, they are very important. They can be asked in any uh, marks. Like it can be asked for 2 marks, 4 marks or 
uh, eight marks. Okay, so be prepared with the uses. Twelfth question: List out the materials required to find focal length of a concave mirror. Write the procedure and suggest the table to record the observations of the experiment. So the aim of my experiment is here. I have to find the focal length of a concave mirror. The materials or the apparatus required is I have a concave mirror. I need a sheet of paper and I need a meter scale. What is the procedure for this? I have to hold a concave mirror. How perpendicular to the direction of sunlight? Then I have to take a small paper and I have to move it slowly in front of the mirror and find out the point where you can get the smallest and brightest spot. This is the image of the sun. That is, we are wearing this paper in such a way that image of the sun will be formed. So the rays coming from the sun parallel to the concave mirror are converging at a point. Now, where the rays meet, that point will be called as focus or focal point capital F of the concave mirror. Now, measure the distance of this spot from the pole of the mirror. That is, this will be my image distance that I have to measure. Now, that distance is the focal length of the given concave mirror. Now, in exam, you also have to draw this diagram, which we are, which is being shown here because it is for eight marks. So, write aim, apparatus, procedure in this diagram, and as also said in the question, I have to draw one observation table because it is asking and suggest a table to record the observations of the experiment. So, this will be my table. To record observations in the table, we can see we have serial number, object distance u, image distance v, focal length f. So here we have to write in the experiment three or four values each time we take it. So let us suppose in first we are getting f one, in second we are get, get getting f two, in third uh, row we are getting f three. So after getting f one, f two, and f three, we have to take out the mean value of focal length because in the experiment it asked me to find out the focal length of the concave mirror. So by taking out the mean of uh, focal length of concave mirror, that is f one plus f two plus f three by three, that is my mean or average. I will get the mean value of focal length. So the aim of my experiment is satisfied. That is, I have given a table to find out the focal length of a concave mirror. And also have found out the focal length of concave mirror. Thirteenth question: Observe the table and write the answers to the questions given below the table. These type of questions are really important. Always will give a table and you have to answer the questions. So the first question is: Name the part of the human eye which helps the eye lens to change its focal length. In this, you can say that here it is telling the focal length is changing by which part? By ciliary muscles. So. What is a part of the human eye which is changing the focal length? Ciliary muscles. You have to write in sentence form. Okay, that is the part of the human eye which is helping the eye lens to change its focal length is ciliary muscles. Next question is: What is the distance between the eye lens and the retina? In this question, it is not given, but such one or two bits will come which is not being asked from the table. You have to know that. So the, the distance, distance between, between the human and eye lens is and retina is 2.5 cm. Remember, don't get confused it between the distance of distinct vision and third question. Distance between eye lens and retina. Distance between eye lens and retina is 2.5 cm, and least distinct of distinct vision will be right, 25 cm. But here, distance in the between eye lens and retina is asked. So we can guess the function of the human, eye. Asked, so yes, the function of the human eye is third question. Write the function of the pupil in the human eye. In this table, we can see that the pupil. Function the fun function of the pupil is it controls the amount of light which is entering into the eye. So the answer for third bit is pupil. Fourth question: Which part of the human eye identifies the color of the object? We can see from this table which part is identifying color cons. So the fourth bit answer is cons. Fourteenth question, which is also the last question of the question paper in part A. Next, we will be dealing part B also. So stay tuned. Find the radii of curvature of convex concave convergent lens. We have a convex concave convergent lens which is made of glass and it is having a refractive index of n is equals to one point five and having a focal length of twenty four centimeter. Ah, uh, and it is given that this one of the radii of curvature is double the other. This is the condition given to us. First, I will write whatever given data is there in the question. Here it is telling. Refractive index n is equals to one point five and here it is ah uh, telling there are two radii of curvature. So let us suppose. Radii of first curvature is R one, and radii of second curvature is equals to R two. 
and let f be the focal length here it is given focal length is equals to how much 24 centimeter one more condition is given that one of the radii of curvature is double the other so let us suppose radio of curvature r2 is equals to 2 times of r1 because double of other means one radio of curvature is double the other means r2 is equals to 2 r1 so this is the condition given to us now i have r1 i have r2 i have f and also i have n so when we have these type of given we can use the lens makers formula so by lens makers formula what is my lens makers formula say lens makers formula states 1 by f is equals to n minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 now let us substitute all these f is given as 24 is equals to n is given as 1.5 minus 1 into r1 and r2 are not given it is telling r2 is 2 times of r1 so in place of r2 i will write 2 r1 so 2 r1 next i have 1 by 24 is equals to what is 1.5 minus 1 1.5 minus 1 means 1.0 5 minus 0 is 5 1 minus 1 is 0 so i got 0 0.5 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by 2 r1 this 0 0.5 will come down what is 24 into 0 0.5 5 fours are 20 5 twos are 10 10 plus 2 is 12 so 1 by 12 is equals to 1 by r1 minus 1 by 2 r1 now 1 by 12 as it is here i have r1 and here also i have r1 so what i'll do is i'll take 1 by r1 common when 1 by r1 comes common here what is left here only 1 is left so 1 minus here i have taken 1 by r1 common so what is left here 1 by 2 so 1 by 12 is equals to 1 by r1 1 as it is minus what is 1 by 2 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 so 1 by 12 is equals to 1 by r1 into 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 so now r1 will go r1 will go here and 12 will come here so r1 is equals to 12 into 0 0.5 what is 12 into 0 0.5 12 into 0 0.5 is 6 5 2s are 10 5 1s are 5 5 plus 1 is 6 6.0 0 means 6 centimeter so i got r1 now in the question it said me to find out radii of curvature radii means plural that is i have to find r1 and r2 also so let us now find r2 we know in the question it gave us r2 is equals to 2 r1 this was a condition given to us so let this be equation 1 so what i'll say is substitute r1 in equation 1 to find out r2 so substitute r1 in equation 1 so r2 is equals to 2 into what is r1 6 so 2 6 are 12 so we got r2 is equals to 12 centimeter so what will i write here therefore radii of curvature are 6 centimeter and 12 centimeter radii of curvatures are 6 centimeter and 12 centimeter start part b objective type so the first question in part b is convex mirror is used as we know convex mirror cannot be used as shaving mirror because in shaving mirror we will get an enlarged image and an enlarged image what is used concave is used right next we have rear view mirror yes convex mirror is a type of rear view mirror because why do we use rear view mirror we use the rear view mirror to get a wider field of view it is used in cars also we know that to see a uh, to see a wider view wide means we, we want many cars to be seen or we want a large road to be seen so for that we use our rear view mirror so convex mirror is used as rear view mirror that is option b b next question focal length of a spherical mirror whose radius of curvature is 32 cm so here r is given as 32 cm i have to find out f how to find out f i know r is equals to 2f this condition so what will f become f is equals to r by 2 so f is equals to what is r here r is given as 32 32 by 2 2 ones are 2 2 ones are 2 1 2 2 6 are 12 so i got the value of f as 16 centimeter so this is the condition used r is equals to 2f so f is equals to r by 2 this formula is used i got f is 16 centimeter 16 centimeter is option B. The color of phenolphthalein indicator in NaOH. We saw in acids, bases, and salts chap chapter that whenever phenolphthalein indicator is added to NaOH, the color of the solution becomes pink. So we can say that color of phenolphthalein indicator, NaOH is a base. In base will be always pink. Remember, whenever we use a base, we get the color of phenolphthalein indicator will be pink. So it is option C. Next question: What color would hydrochloric acid pH is equals to one? 
turn universal indicator we know this is my universal indicator this is given in textbook also you have from 0 to 14 so here we have red brown etc so your ph is 1 is for hcl it is saying so here which color we have we have red color so in uh, on this scale we have some red orange yellow pink we know that 0 1 2 3 on a ph scale we have in a universal indicator so this particular one will be of which color red color what is this this will be of red color on this suppose one okay what, what is my answer my answer is red that is option d next question what gas is produced when zinc is made to react with hydrochloric acid write the reaction and find out zinc formula is zn plus hcl when zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid it combines zinc reacts with chlorine to form zinc chloride plus what is left when gas is left which is called as hydrogen gas so which gas is evolved when zinc and hydrochloric acid reacting hydrogen gas is evolved so option a now this figure is which type of lens, right? This figure we know is a concave or convex lens that we saw in lenses chapter that is in refraction of lenses chapter that is option D, concave or convex lens is this lens, okay? Next, size of the image formed by a concave lens is always, remember, concave lens will always form diminished image and concave mirror will form enlarged image remember mirror and lenses both are opposite so concave mirror will form an enlarged image and concave lens will form a diminished image both are opposite to each other concave mirror enlarged concave lens diminished okay similarly it is opposite if concave lens is forming diminished then con uh, convex lens will form enlarged eighth question least distinct of uh, least distance of distinct vision is we know least distance of distinct vision is 25 cm. Option B. Bifocal lens is used to correct. We know bifocal lens means both the lenses are used. That is concave as well as convex. In which, I, uh, in which technique do we use bifocal lens? We use bifocal lens in press biopia. Because we know in myopia which lens is used? Concave lens is used. Right? And none cannot be the option because of course we use a bifocal lens and in hypermetropia also we don't uh, need both the lenses. Only in press biopia we need both the lenses. So answer is press biopia that is option A. Next question. Substance used for making surfaces smooth. We know we read about plaster of Paris. That is plaster of Paris. Is, plaster of Paris makes the surface smooth. So option A. This completes our physics question paper. If you understand this video, please, please give a big thumbs up. Please share this video with others. And also if you are new to our channel, please subscribe to this video, channel. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe, click that bell icon.